Hi, this is Kevin Bonham, and this is, at long last, the eighth in a series of video tutorials on using Adobe Illustrator targeted at scientists. And uh, it's been a while since I recorded one of these. Um, I got distracted by writing and defending a PhD thesis and settling into a new job and getting married. Um, but I decided it was finally time to come back and make good on some of the promises that I've made in previous videos. And in this video specifically, I want to talk about some more advanced ways of using color. So we talked about color in the fourth video, and I sort of use some of these default colors um, to put colors into, uh, into the shapes that we're making. Uh, if you recall, you have stroke, uh, which is the outer boundary, and you have the fill color. And when you open up a new, a new project, you are limited or you may be able to see these uh, swatches up here, these sort of default color swatches, um, but it's not necessarily immediately apparent how you can get some better colors, especially if, like me, you don't really understand color theory because you're not an artist. Um, your figures can end up looking fairly bright, saturated, garish, um, kind of like a clown threw up on your cartoons. Uh, but I wanted to show you a couple of tools that you can use to get better colors in your drawings, and also to save, when you find good colors, to save them for future projects. And so uh, for this video tutorial, you're gonna need two panels open. Uh, the swatches panel should look something like this in a new project, as well as the color guide. And as always, if you don't have one of these panels, you can go to window and make sure you have color guide and swatches checked uh, and visible. So, the first thing that I want to talk about is the swatches panel, and specifically the fact that you are not limited to these color swatches that you find here. So I had mentioned previously, if you have a color panel, you can go through and you can sort of select all kinds of different colors, and if you find one that you like in here, you can actually take that and just drag it into your swatches panel and save it. So now if I click off of this, if I find some other color, it, even if you didn't apply this to one of your uh, shapes, you can still have this swatch uh, for later use. So that's really cool. And in addition, Adobe has a whole series of preset color groups set up. So if you come down here to the bottom of the swatches panel, you can see you have the swatch libraries menu, and you can come down here, the normal uh, colors that are in that should be in your swatches panel when you first open something up is the this basic RBG value. You can see these are all the same colors. Um, but you can also find a whole swath of different things. And I have not gone through this in any uh, amount of extensive detail. But you can see that you can have all of these different groups of colors that are related to each other. And you can just click and drag these folders or individual colors. Or you can just double click on a folder and send that into your swatches panel. And then you have that now for use in uh, this diagram. So this has got some nice uh, browns here that I'm gonna use for my cell instead of those bright greens. So that's really great, it can be super useful. Um, one thing you might notice though, you pick a bunch of these Baroque colors, you found a couple of things in your color, uh, your color panel here that you've saved, this sky blue and pink, and now you want to use those in another project. Open up a new one here. And you see now I've got this swatches panel that no longer contains those nice Baroque colors or uh, any of those things that I saved from this color panel. But don't despair. You can save a configuration like this and use it for future projects. So I found a couple of these Baroque panels I really like. Let's say maybe. Uh, I also quite like some of the uh, nature panels in the uh, beach segment here. So uh, these blues and browns are really nice. So let's say you have this panel set up and I wanna be able to come back to this without having to go into or remember that I grabbed these from Baroque and from beach. I can come here again in my swatches library menu and I can say save swatches. When you do this, you can save it to somewhere. There's a default folder that will allow you to uh, find those things later in the 
library panel under the user defined set. So if you saved those under user defined, you can see here uh, that you have that I have a couple of things that I've saved previously, including this annual reviews color palette that I mentioned in the last video. So this is a set of colors that I pulled from an annual review style guide. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a sec. But before I do that, I also want to mention the color guide here. So sometimes you find some colors that are pretty good, but not quite what you're looking for. You don't necessarily want to have to dig through all of the different swatch libraries to find something perfect. Let's say I like this brown, but it's a little too dark. I could try to find where that was in here, but now I don't know exactly where it is, but instead of doing that, I can use the color guide. If you have a color selected, you can see in my color guide that I have a whole bunch of different tints and shades related to this brown color that I have selected. So the color that I have selected is always in the top center here. And in addition, these are all sort of similar browns and yellows, but if you wanna get other colors that will go well with this brown, you can see if you click this menu here that you have a bunch of different color relationships, color rules that you can select among. So I quite like the triads or uh, if you want something to stand stand out, the complementary set. So here this blue is gonna go really nice. So maybe instead of having a brown nucleus, I wanna have one of these sort of grayish blue nuclei that goes pretty nicely with this brown color uh, and is sort of stands out a little bit more if that's what you're going for. So this can help. A lot of times I will just take like a default color like this, super garish, and then select one of the sort of lighter or darker tints of that so it's not quite so uh, in your face. So that can be really useful. And in addition, if you have one of these color groups selected, your color guide becomes, down the center here, you have these colors in this color group, as well as all the lighter and darker shades of those colors. So this can be a really nice way of having, if you have a color group that you like, but you want some more options, uh, you can use the color guide really effectively there. And of course, you know, if I pick this color and I want to use it for other things, then you can always drag that from here into one of these color groups or into your default color group. Okay, I should also mention, by the way, that uh, in these folders, these color groups, you can make new ones if you want, but these color groups cannot take patterns or gradients. So if you make a really nice gradient, you can't save it into one of these color groups because then it won't interact well with the color guide, but you can save it uh, in the sort of upper layer here that's not in one of these folders, and those will get saved along with your uh, default colors. Or I'm sorry, uh, with your colors when you say save swatches. Okay, so um, let's say you find a, um, so that's how you use the swatches panel and the color guide panel. I also wanna mention quickly how you can pull colors from an object that is not actually an Adobe Illustrator file. So if you open up something like a PNG, here I have a, um, a figure from a PLOS pathogens paper that has a structure of a dengue virus protein. And I really like these reds, blues, and purples, but this isn't an Adobe Illustrator file, and I can't actually select this to get a color swatch uh, to pull into another project. But you can still get it, and you can get it using the eyedropper tool, which is over here. It's keyboard shortcut I, and all you need to do is using the eyedropper tool, click on these colors, and then boom, it shows up in your swatches panel and you can drag it down. If you want, let's say I'm gonna make a color group. That's my PLOS color group. Here with that red, I can grab a darker red. Oops. Get maybe a lighter red as well. And of course, you know, in this case, these are all different reds. I can maybe find similar things by going into the color guide here. Um, but I just wanna pull colors directly from this figure because they look quite nice. Okay, and let's get some of these purples as well. Okay, and maybe I also think that a gradient would look nice, so you can grab a gradient here. Let's make a, a light 
to dark purple gradient. So that looks good. And again, I can't unfortunately drag this into this color group. You see when I try to do it, it gives me a little error message, but I can, can instead pull it into this uh, upper panel here above the color group. What you'll notice when you do that though, is that you go into another project, I come back here and those swatches are no longer present or they're not present in this other project. Um, but again, what I can do is I can save these swatches into uh, a swatch into the swatches folder. And then when I come back to this project, go into my library, user defined, it's cut off there a little bit, but I can grab my tutorial eight and there's my color groups. So I can pull in this group as well as this gradient. And now I can apply that gradient to this cell. So I've got these nice colors from that plus review. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how you can use colors a little bit more effectively and find better colors uh, either from within a project using the default swatches and the color guide or by finding images that have colors that you like uh, and pulling them in. So I hope that's helpful and I will see you in the next video, which will hopefully come, I should say, sooner than this one did.